My name is Daniel Jonas, and my thesis exhibition titled DIY Do It Yourself is currently installed at the Holtzman Gallery at Towson University. The sculptures I've included in the show come from a body of research into nostalgia, communication, and the home, and I'd like to talk a little bit about each piece in my process. First, I'd like to play a quick walkthrough of the installation and give you the digital tour. I'll then provide a brief comment on each of the pieces. Seen right as you walk into the gallery, Glimpses Number 1 is part of a duo of sculptures I made early in the program. I had been experimenting with ways that I could convey communication or home. Communicating over long distance with those you care about, such as friends and family, can be difficult or laborious. There are so many things we lose in translation when communicating via technology that we have when face-to-face. By losing voice inflection and our ability to see body language, we lose context that could better inform you. When I was making the Glimpses series, I was thinking about talking to friends and family. Sometimes it's not possible to get the whole story via text. This can be purposeful or not, but it obscures the situation as if viewing from a distance. The idea of obscuring felt pertinent, and I began experimenting in ways to obscure messages in a way that could reference a home or living environment. Glimpses uses materials one would use when building a home and elevates them to a new level. The screen mesh acts as a metaphor for different things. A screen can keep things inside or out, it can block vision, or it could be what we look at to communicate. These screens contain short conversations, almost like a call and response. The messages are quick, one-word responses to questions which could have longer responses. I chose to keep the messages short to prompt the viewer to search for the answers in the other texts. 
using single words or emoticons to answer questions can feel like taking the short way out, as if to avoid having the conversation. To draw the viewer in close, I made the screens on glimpses number two much tighter to really frame in the singular texts. This pair of sculptures titled I Can't Hear You and I Won't Listen were developed earlier this year. They represent the continuation of multiple concepts that had taken form in previously made sculptures. The text bubble motif is used both as an overall form for the sculpture and as a way of structuring the installation layout. By staggering the height of the two sculptures, I can create a flow of how the viewer reads the work, similar to a text conversation. The boxes has a fan and ducting, representing other hidden parts of the home. The white noise the fans generate can be heard in the following video. Inside both of the boxes are a single line of text, the same in both pieces. They read, I just want the best for you creating this echo of sentiment, which feels redundant. Following the glimpses series, my use of the text bubble motif had taken on new importance. As something so recognizable, it helps in making my work more relatable. People can recognize the shape and its function, which can give importance to what is written. How someone views my art and how they experience it is something that is important to me. My artwork is meant to be viewed in person to explore the nooks and crannies of each piece. As my work developed, I undertook a search for places where messages and function come together to influence how our lives unfold. The use of the white vents seen on the previous sculptures helped develop this next piece titled Cornered. The use of 3D printing to further develop the vent registers offered a unique solution. Many store-bought vents are limited in both material and design. The beige metallic vents were laser etched to inscribe text bubbles along the moving flaps. The printed vent registers opened up a new realm of possibilities. Each register is printed in color combinations, also found in Apple and other tech messaging apps. By looking through the vent registers on either side, one can see right through. The use of store-bought wallpaper was inspired by the pattern and memories of various family homes. The copper legs stand the corner up like a table, but do not give the sculpture an obvious purpose. This piece challenged me to focus in on specific concepts. The text within the registers is meant to guide the viewer to read these conversations back and forth in a tight space. The two panels on the back wall, titled Cover Up 1 and 2, were also produced this year. I began designing the pattern toward the end of 2020 and had them printed for me. 
the interest in custom wallpaper followed after the completion of Cornered. I drew inspiration from many different sources, including William Morris, 70s pattern work, and modern technology motifs. The heavy lines that grid the panel are reminiscent of 70s wallpapers, similar to those my parents would have grown up with. The Morris-style flowers hearken to my grandparents' house, while the text bubble motif comes from my generation. As we work our way around the gallery, the mantle hangs above our heads. This mantle was rescued from the dumpster and has taken on a new life. What interested me about this object was its previous life. How many holidays did the mantle witness? Were the existing holes used for stockings or to support a loved one's ashes? The history of the mantle got me interested in the function it once served. By taking it out of context, removing the support of the wall, we have exposed a hidden space. This one contains many sharp points hiding away things that should not be seen. The degradation of the spikes along the top represent the dulling of words and purpose, rounding them over until they can be handled. From this vantage point, we can see the general layout of the show. The colors of the various wallpapers support the materials of the other objects. The natural warm hues of wood either clash or fuse with the bright colors of technology. The sculptures I've placed on the pedestals help transition the show from unplaceable furniture to functional home. This piece, titled Copper Number no. 1, was made during the national shutdown due to COVID-19. During the time in my apartment, I was able to brainstorm places and substructures which could represent the ideas I had been researching. The jumble of copper pipe and tangle of yarn running through the pipe represent how messages can be misinterpreted or lost in translation. The cans on a string also bring memories of childhood and the imagination it takes to transmit calls through string and metal. The plywood base is a slice of flooring substructure exposing the layers underneath. The last piece in the main room of the Holtzman Gallery is this piece, titled Bellows. When I first entered the program, my interest in craft and nostalgia led me to investigate memories of my grandparents' home and the objects which we treasured when we sold the house. I can distinctly picture the blue and black bellows sitting next to the non-functioning fireplace. I always found it kind of funny that they had this tool sitting next to the fireplace which never needed it, and this ended up being an object we rescued from the house. The floral design etched on the top of the bellows is a riff of the pattern hand-painted on the original bellows. The pattern has been repeated along the edge to bring the past into modern times, paying honor to these memories. The last pieces I'll be discussing are hidden away in the back corner of the gallery. These sculptures were developed in 2019 and are titled Can You Keep a Secret and Eavesdropping, and these pieces were a major part of my development as an artist. They were exciting to build and observe people interacting with them. Each vent contains a space underneath or behind, which has stored all that would fall into these spaces. The dust, dirt, hair, and grime, which collects in these, begin to hide the messages that have also fallen in. The blue and white text bubbles, inscribed with questions and answers, have grown dirty from time. Viewers are encouraged to stand on the floor or plinth and open and close the vents. The flaps on the vents are inscribed with messages, which only become visible at the right angle.
I would like to thank my committee, John Lundak, Dr. Jen Figg, Richard Holt, and Joshua DeMonte for your support and guidance during my time in the program. I would also like to thank Dr. Susan Isaacs, Dr. Aaron Lehman, and Michael Boyukas for their help in installing and preparing for the exhibition. Thank you for listening to my gallery talk and for checking out my work.